Good evening, everybody. So today, I'm just going to get right to it. Um, this is prophetic. And the reason why I say it's prophetic, because these, these are five different things that you can do to help combat asthma. Um, also, to combat uh, illness. This is the time of the year where kids go back to school. And um, there's all types of germs and everything that everybody's catching. And, you know, especially the little kids, they're coughing and they don't they haven't learned yet to cover their mouth when they cough or sneeze. So a lot of stuff starts to go around in September when school lets back in. So I, the reason why I'm saying it's prophetic, because people say prophetic a lot and it's just almost like a cliche um, but I'm saying it's prophetic because each one of these um, five things that I've learned that can be done to help asthma have come straight from God. Um, a little bit about my story is, is, you know, I had never had to deal with asthma or anything when I was growing up. But when I had children, I had uh, twins who were premature. And um, there was a lot of damage done to their lungs because they had to be intubated at one point. And so they just, you know, they said that they both had asthma. One was worse than the other one. Um, one grew out of it and the other one, you know, I, I just remember looking at her, watching her breathe. And any, anyone who has ever had an asthmatic child, it is a very scary thing because... You know, if you stop breathing, you're done. You know what I mean? You either gonna have brain damage or you going you or you know die. So, you know, I can remember if anybody has ever stayed up with a child and they're watching, you know, their baby or their young child just watching them breathe, um, and not knowing at what point what, where's the line that's crossed when you should be rushing them to the hospital. And I had to rush my daughter a couple of times to the hospital because she wasn't breathing, breathing right, or she, the way that she was breathing, I didn't, I didn't really, um, I didn't like it. So we took her to the hospital, and um, the doctor, you know, at one point, you know, they, they said that she had asthma, and that she needed to be on basically steroids through the nebulizing machine every day as maintenance. And then, uh, I guess they call it a bronchial dilator as a, uh, as a, at for when it was like an, she was in acute distress. Um, and they tell you the steroids, that the steroids are, have nothing to do with the steroids for um, men that want to pump iron or even women, you know, that want to make muscles. That They say that it's two different things, but... You know, when you hear about men that are on steroids, you always hear that they become these horrible jerks and they're, you know, if they weren't, if they weren't a woman beater, they became one because they, um, because of the steroids, you know, and they say, oh, that's not the same thing as what we give the kids. It's two different things. Well, my daughter may not have been pumping iron and, and made muscles or anything like that, but her attitude was horrible. Uh, she was whiny. Um, this is with or without illness. She was just whiny. And it, and I attribute it to the steroids. It made her um, just nasty. Um, <clears throat> and then there would come a time where, you know, she would have these, uh, where she was in distress. And I would give her the pro prescribed medication. And it didn't seem like it was working. It didn't seem like it was doing anything. And I'm just like, the one day I just remember crying out to God. I was like, God, you know, you are the healer. And I said, I cannot keep doing this. This is, this is, um, this is scary. And I, I want my daughter to be healed. I said, God, what must I do for her to be healed? And I cried out to him. And I tell you no lie. The number one thing that he said at that time, because it didn't come... All these five things that I'm going to tell you didn't come all at the same time. So the first thing that he said to me when I was in my distress and I was crying out to him, he said, no more processed milk. So that's number one. 
Um, and I know may come as a shock to a lot of you because we are bred and born and bred to believe that, you know, if you don't give your kids milk, you're a horrible person because they need that milk to grow strong bones and teeth and all that this good stuff. And I'm here to tell you that these are, those are just scare tactics to make you buy the milk. Y'all see what happened to Oprah when she went up against the cow industry, when she went up, the, went up against the beef industry. Um, they went after her. So, and at that time, you know, Oprah was like the darling of, uh, of America. I, I guess she still is. But at that time, you know, she was like the darling of America. And it was like, wow, why would they come after Oprah? Now, what you got to realize, everything is about that dollar bill. Everything is about money. So milk is pushed in our school system. The, the, um, that's all they have. A lot of times kids don't even have an option of whether or not they want to pick something else. It's milk, milk, milk. So when God said no more processed milk, I said, okay, sounds strange to me. But God, you're God. You made, you made my daughter. You know what was best for her. So I, I cut out the processed milk. And I figured if God is saying cut out processed milk for her, then I'm going to cut it out for myself and my, my other children. Um, because if it's that serious, then it's not good for us either, even though we may not be we may not have asthma or allergy. But I never was into milk like that anyway, so it wasn't a big deal to me. But um, when my daughters, you know, they go to school and everything, I would make sure that they that they didn't drink milk. I would take you take your water bottle for your lunch or you take um, juice or whatever. Um, But no more processed milk that came straight from the father. And so I decided that my children would not be partaking in milk. And you could do your own research to figure out why God would say that. Obviously, um, the milk of today is not the milk of yesteryear. Okay. Um. A lot of the a lot of people are lactose intolerant now, it's meaning your body cannot tolerate milk. So, and just because you don't have any symptoms doesn't mean that your body is not fighting um, against milk and causing a disruption in your system and causing a um, an immune response um, in your system. So while your body is fighting this milk. The, the the whatever is in there or not or the lack thereof that what used to be in there due to pastor pasteurization and everything else while your body is sitting there trying to fight what it perceives as a toxin which is the milk while your body's trying to fight that it's not focusing on helping you to breathe and to uh kill whatever you know real uh intruders that you may have into have in your body it's focusing on this milk and so my daughter can't it's hard for her to heal her it's hard for her body to do what it needs to do to heal her lungs if her body is sitting there focusing on this milk now the other thing is i've heard you know when as i when i was younger i heard that milk causes mucus now if you are if you have asthma a lot of times what comes with asthma is You have this mucus and and you're trying to cough it up phlegm or whatever you know whatever you want to call it that's in your lungs you're trying to cough that up well milk if that's going to cause mucus that's just going to add fuel to the fire now when i one day when i had to take my daughter to the hospital they said you know give her lots and lots of fluids and i said okay but what can she drink um you know she likes milk can she have milk because i heard that you know that that calls causes mucus Oh, no, no, that doesn't really, she can have whatever she wants. She can have whatever, that's just an old wives tale. Well, you know what, some of those old wives knew what they was talking about, you know, or else we, a lot of us wouldn't be here today. So some of those old wives knew what they were talking about. So um, I, I do believe that it still causes mucus. Just check yourself if you drink milk see how you feel afterwards sometimes we need to listen to our own bodies to see what what's what's going on if you drink milk and then you feel like you got a whole bunch of phlegm in your throat afterwards that should be an indication to you but everybody's different so just 
you know what I mean? Check to see um, what God is telling you. I'm, I, all these things that I'm telling you always get confirmation. This is your disclaimer. All these things that I'm telling you, check with your doctor first and um, and check with God. You know, you do these things at your own risk. So this is what I'm, this is my disclaimer. You do these things at your own risk. I'm just telling you my story and what I did with my daughter. Um, so number one was no more processed milk. She stopped the milk and she, um, and she got better. She got better. But did she, she wasn't cured, but she got better. Um, the other thing was, you know, I kept seeking God about what, what to do for her. And one day I had a dream. This is number two. One day I had a, a, a dream and God had showed me, uh, it's called NAC. It comes in a, it comes in a capsule. I don't know if it comes in any other form, but it comes in a capsule. Nobody in my, fa my family can swallow pills. That's just a I don't know what our issue is. That's a, a whole nother video for another day, but none of us can swallow pills. So, um, God showed me this capsule of NAC being opened up and being poured in the applesauce. And I heard God say, she will do well with this if you give her some of this. So I immediately looked it up and, um, found out that it was a thing and I purchased it, purchased the applesauce and mixed it up together, explained to her what I was doing. And, you know, when she got older, she began to prepare this stuff herself. But it is something to do um, on, a, on a maintenance level. Okay, so for example, we know we're going to go back to school in September, around August or July. That's when we start with our NAC stuff. That's when we start with that. And... Um, have her take I have her take it every single day um through the school year so that um her it, it strengthens her lungs and also will bring out also will bring out anything that's dry out anything that's inside of her that needs to come out like you know mucus and stuff like that congestion whatever will dry that up but not in like a gross way just like on a maintenance level um and strength and it strengthens the lungs now the other thing when i did my research i found out that the nac is something that they use at a host at the hospital to help when people are having an asthmatic attack and um i did not know that but it's probably in a different form it's probably something that they do iv um but uh, i would have, have to do more research on it i just know what god told me to do for her so it's called NAC, and um, that's number two. Number three. So as I stated before with number two with the NAC, I was supposed to be giving her that NAC. And those are the initials of the thing, by the way. Uh, I was supposed to be giving her that NAC on a regular basis, on a daily basis, and I kind of slacked off. And then one time she was in acute distress and I was like, God, what do I do? I don't want to take her to the hospital. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you go to the hospital and you come out worse than what you are. So I said, God, I don't want to take her to the hospital. What do I do? And he spoke to me the words pleurisy root. And I, a lot of these things, this is, this is one of the ways I know it's God's because I didn't even know what pleurisy root was. I didn't even know that that was even an herb. So I looked it up. I purchased it. Um, you can get it at a health food store. A lot of stuff now I get online. You know, a lot of the stuff I get online um, with different um, um, brands that I trust. Because, you know, a couple of years ago they did this thing where they they just randomly selected vitamins and, and um, herbs that people sell. A different brand sell and they found that they mixed that stuff with sand a lot of that stuff just has sand in it and um, so you got to make sure it's it's um, somewhere where you trust okay so I bought the pleurisy root I brought it in a dropper form and liquid and um, 
would mix that in juice for her and she would take that and what pleurisy root would do is a lot of times that congestion is all backed up in your lungs and pleurisy root will take out what's sitting on the top like if like that that um phlegm and mucus and all that stuff and congestion is sitting right on the top of your lungs it'll get it it will come make it come right on out so I gave her the pleurisy root and I could see like within 10-15 minutes the cough you could hear her coughing up this stuff and that's a good thing if they're coughing it up that's good that means it's coming out um but where you know what's concerning is when someone is coughing and that you can hear you know you have to have a mom's ear if someone is coughing and that stuff is not moving at all it's just sitting there right on the top of your lungs but that pleurisy root when you take that that'll make stuff start to move okay so that was number three um another thing um that god showed me to do was uh this is number four is and this is more of a um more of a method it's not anything you really ingest via um like you ingest orally but it's more of a um oh gosh what do you call it i'll just describe it and you guys can call it what you want but what I do is I take a rag um, let it be a rag that you don't care about that you're not going to use you know just a regular rag take a rag I get that rag in um, warm water wring it out douse the rag with castor oil castor oil is one of the best oils that you can use if you want it to seep into your skin okay so I get castor oil and then um, I get some rosemary essential oil, rosemary essential oil, put like 10 drops on top of the castor oil that you just poured on. Put it on the child's chest where you think the lungs would be. And then you put the heating pad on top of that. And I usually do this at nighttime when they, they're going to bed. And if they're old enough, all right, when you get uncomfortable with the heating pad and you want to take it off, just let them let them decide when they want to take it off. But if they're little, little, you you know, you got to have to gauge yourself. All right, it's been, you know, 30 minutes or whatever, let's, or 45 minutes, let's, you know, take this thing off. And you will see that your child will, again, begin to cough up that mucus. It will um, loosen things up. That castor oil will will go straight to the source of what needs what needs to happen. Like that castor oil is like the carrier oil to carry the rosemary where it needs to be. And as a bonus to this, you can call this like four egg since we're talking about um, essential oils. Um, one of the most common things that you can do, and this is not what God has shown me, but it's just one of those things that like everybody knows this, like eucalyptus oil and peppermint oil those two you know if you want to get some carrier oil you know you know like how your mom used to do vicks vapor rub and they used to put it like a little bit under your nose and some on your chest to open you up same thing here but this time if you're putting it directly you know on your skin you can't just go and put peppermint oil or um eucalyptus oil on directly on it's going to burn so you need a carrier oil so um you could even use coconut oil or um even olive oil um like say you don't have any you say you just don't have castor oil on hand and you're in a pinch you can do that um but also you could put the eucalyptus oil um in the bathtub with your child or if your child takes showers put a couple of drops around the drain area so they don't slip and um let them breathe in that eucalyptus or that peppermint oil and um you want to get the water as hot as they can stand it as long as they don't have fever you get the water as hot as they can stand it um you know if they're young you you just be careful just put the regular temperature that you usually do with your kid because you don't want to you know burn them but if they're older and they need to start taking um need to start being mature 
in their um in their care and in their health then you tell them like okay put your shower as hot as you can take it and put a couple of drops in because we need to teach our kids because they're going to be mothers and fathers one day and they need to be they need to know what to do um naturally to help uh their children um in in medicine because you don't want to always just go running off to the doctor to take whatever it is that they you know want to take you know give give your kids so some of that stuff is not some of that stuff is um the side effects are worse than the daggone illness that you had so um that was for a and b so now we're on number five number five was the last one of the last things that God showed me and this is um, number five is great because it not only helps to strengthen your immune system but it also helps with the symptoms of whatever it is that um, is ailing you so um, number five is elderberry elderberry and you want a elderberry syrup and god specifically said the name of the brand so i'm going to specifically say the name of the brand as well and i'll put a picture of it up because i cannot pronounce it uh some will call some will call whatever something like that it's syrup but like i said you're gonna see the picture of it with the name up there so don't go by how what i said um but it is a elderberry syrup now some people you know know how to make their own elderberry syrup it is toxic if you don't prepare it the right way um so you want to make sure that you either get a brand or have get some training on how to actually make this make this stuff the right way because um eventually i would like to grow the elderberry because i'm in the northeast and those those actually grow wild where I'm at um, but I haven't been able to um, identify any I, I don't exactly trust myself right now to go ahead and identify um, um, and say oh this is elderberry and it's at the right stage that I can pick it and be able to do whatever I need to do to make a syrup out of it so um, I don't want to poison um, my children or myself so I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing and so I say the same thing to you you want to make sure that you know what you're doing before you go ahead and just, you know, start picking stuff out in your backyard. Now, there is a, um, there is a app that, you know, you, you either take a picture or you put the camera on, on your phone and this app will tell you what herb, what plant, it even will tell you what animal you're looking at. So, uh, and it's called the Seek app s-e-e-k which i just love it you know you can be out in the woods foraging or whatever and the app will tell you but then again like i said you always just you always got to be careful because what if the app is malfunctioning and you end up ingesting something that's not right so um just proceed with caution so anyway that some book called the elderberry um syrup will help you help with the symptoms so like kids coughing you know that will help naturally with the symptoms also helps to strengthen their immunity this is something that um actually i just want my whole entire family to just take at times like on rotation because it is so healthy and it will help your um immune system fight against anything not just you know asthma or colds or whatever It, it will help your immune system so that's what I'm, um, but this stuff is expensive. It's not cheap, right? And, um, but that, so that's the issue is that I would, I want to, like the pleurisy root I mentioned, I want to grow that, you know, I want to grow everything. So I want to grow my own medicine. But until then, um, like I said, just make sure that you get your you get you get um stuff from a rep- your uh, herbs and things from a reputable co- uh, uh excuse me that you get your herbs from a reputable company so let's just recap number one was no more processed milk 
that costs you nothing. All you need to do is instead of milk, we just use a milk substitute. We'll, we'll use cashew milk, some type of nut milk. And then I love the cashew milk because you're getting magnesium and you need that mag magnesium is also good for your um, immunity. Um, the NAC, a lot of people don't know what that is. And to be honest with you, I can't even tell you, describe to you exactly what it is. It has something to do with um, acetaminophen, like in its natural form. It's not a pain reliever, but it has something to do with that type of plant for uh that that uh type of plant source all this stuff all these different medicines and and things and things that you get from the pharmacy uh pharmacy they all had their start from a plant but they ended up taking um isolating one element in that plant and concentrating it and then giving it to you and that's all well and good but that always has um that always has its drawbacks everything that's why there's a whole movement towards whole foods because when you start isolating um, certain uh, elements in in a food then that causes problems on the other end um, so that uh, NAC was number two number three was pleurisy root and like I said that helps to get the congestion up right um, the things that are uh, the congestion that's sitting on the top helps they bring that up and rosemary and the heat and pad castor oil pack that um also will help you help your child to sleep feel comfortable and um also just a feeling of well-being and it will just make um also make whatever's in there that's congesting you clogging up the pipes come out it will it will go deeper um my thought it will go deeper than the pleurisy root uh, and the simple call will help with the symptoms but also um not just treat the symptoms but it will also help to to cure so after this, my daughter, basically, I was able to throw out, after all these things, I was able to throw out um, her nebulizer. Um, and she goes longer um, times without having.